Welcome back to Moist with the Tally, and today we're at our 24th ranked team. But before we get into our 24th ranked team, let's do a recap of the team we teams we've done so far. At number 32, you have your LA Rams. Number 31, your Detroit Lions. Number 30, your Arizona Cardinals. At 29, your Washington Commanders. 28, your Carolina Panthers. 27, your Indianapolis Colts. 26, your New England, New England, England Patriots. 25, Las Vegas Raiders. And today, New York Giants. So your number 24th team on your SIP to tally, or your more SIP to tally power rankings is the New York Football Giants. But before we get into the New York Football Giants, if you've been here so far and you're enjoying the series, please like the video. If you have not subscribed, please do so and hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of the videos in this power rankings drop. But without further ado, let's get into the New York football giants and what I like and dislike about their football team. Let's start with the quarterback room. Let me get my paperwork here together. Quarterback room, I have them ranked 21. And we all know their QB one is, they call him Danny Dimes, Daniel Jones. Uh, also in that quarterback room, they have Tyrod Taylor and uh, Tommy DeVito. So Tyrod's a quality backup. Uh, as far as their room itself, I have them ranked as the 21st QB room. Um, Daniel Jones threw for, I think, 3,200 yards. Let me check to make, check my math, make sure. Yeah, 3,205 yards. And Tyrod's a quality backup. Um I could go on a soapbox about Tyrod Taylor and and what happened to him and and uh, with the Chargers and I just don't even want to go back into it. But he was a quality backup when he was in Baltimore. He was a quality backup, a quality starter when he was in Buffalo. I think he was a backup in Cleveland. But Tyrod's up in age. He's 33 now, so you know he's really you know on the back end of his career, the very back end of his career. But if Daniel Jones went down, I think Tyrod could win them some games. Maybe not, you know, take them to, like, lead them to the playoffs or whatnot. But I think he's a good mentor for Daniel Jones, uh, similar play styles, and he can teach Daniel Jones to, you know, some of the things he needs to do to keep in his progression because they gave Daniel Jones the bag. They had two guys that were up for um, maybe franchise tag, and they had to make a decision. Either they signed one and tagged the other. They signed Daniel Jones and they tagged Saquon Barkley. So Daniel Jones is their guy. But if I have not mentioned it, I have their quarterback room ranked as 21st. 21st. Cause, and that ranking comes with the combination of Daniel Jones and Tyrod Taylor together. Let's get to their running back room. The running back room, they have Saquon Barkley, Matt Breida, Eric Gray, and Gary Brightwell. Uh, the combination of Gary, I'm not Gary. Saquon Barkley and Matt Burita, I really like. We all know Saquon is a, a year removed from his his injury to the tune of 1,300 yards, uh, 57 catches for 333 yards. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. Saquon led their team in rushing by far and led their team in receiving. Saquon is the New York Giants. He's the New York Giants, and that running back room, on the strength of Saquon, and he has a little help from Matt Burita, I have them ranked eighth. The running back room, I have ranked eighth. I have their wide receiver room. Now, again, Saquon led the league. I'm sorry, not the league. Led this team in receiving with 57 catches. He led this team in receiving with 57 catches. Saquon did. Now, Richie James. And I don't think Richie James is even on this team anymore. Let me see. Yeah, Richie James tied Saquon with 57 yards. but I mean, 57 catches. But still. He's not there anymore. Uh, they have Darius Slayton, and I think Slayton was hurt last year. They have that because Slayton played. Uh, he played 16 games, so he wasn't hurt as much. He had 46 catches, but still, let's get to the room. Uh, wide receiver room: they have Darius Slayton, Paris Campbell, uh, Isaiah Hock, Hodgkins. They drafted Jalen Hyatt, who was one of my favorite guys. They got one Dale Robinson, who was a fast guy. Still got Sterling Shepard. Uh, got Jameson Crowder, the older guy, and uh, they got Makai Polk. I like Makai Polk. I don't know if he's going to make the team, but I like Makai Polk coming out of uh, Mississippi State to, um, you know, do some things. Uh, their receiver room I have ranked 25th. They don't have a guy. So it's going to be, you know, receiver by committee. 
So if Daniel Jones just hits the open guy, maybe they can have some success, but they don't have a guy that can say, hey, it's third and eight. The ball's coming to you. Get open. They ain't got that guy. So maybe they – well, they don't have that guy in their receiver room. I think they got that guy in the next segment we're going to talk about. But as far as receivers, they have their receiver room ranked 25th. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but their receiver room is ranked 25th uh, by my standards. Tight end room. Newly acquired. Newly married, (laughs) Darren Waller. Darren Waller, we know, started in Baltimore, had some personal issues, ended up going to the Raiders and blossomed, but um, had some injury issues and was traded to um, New York. I don't know if he was traded or just not re-signed. I can't remember how New York acquired him. Uh, Put it in the comment section how they acquired him. I think it was a trade, though. But now he is a giant. And I think he's in that second tier of tight ends because, you know, with the tight ends, you have Kelsey by himself. Then you have uh, Mark Andrews. You have Kittle. You have Waller. Um, and then you got a bunch of other guys right up on, under that group right there. But if Waller can stay healthy, he's a guy. He, he's a guy for them. Uh, Daniel Jones, he's a guy that Jones can rely on. He's just as fast as many receivers. Runs very good routes. He just has to stay healthy. If he can stay healthy, that's a reliable guy that um, Daniel Jones can go to. Uh, could lead this team in receiving. If the numbers go the way they went last year, Darren Waller could actually lead this team in receiving because the, the leading receiver only had 57 catches, and that was Richie James and Saquon Barkley. So it could be a blessing for Daniel Jones to have Darren Waller on that team. And don't let me forget about Bellinger, the backup tight end he had a great rookie year not a great look he had a good rookie year last year and then Lawrence Cager the tight end that used to be a receiver from the University of Miami so um and he went somewhere else too but he played in Miami for a minute I think he ended up playing at Georgia if I'm not mistaken but he used to be a uh, receiver now he's a tight end so you guys are athletic tight end room but if I haven't mentioned it their tight end room is ranked 13th 11 12 13th in my um power rankings let's move over to the o-line now they got they got two tackles that i really like in evan neal and andrew thomas but i don't necessarily like the rest of it they got ben bredesen they got john michael schmitz and mark gusowski now did they open up holes for the tune of saquon getting all the yards he got yes and then and i forgot to mention daniel jones had 700 yards too so that's 2,000 rushing yards right there But Daniel Jones kind of got his yards on the edge, running zone stuff, and running when uh, passes passes on passing plays when, you know, receivers couldn't get open. But Saquon don't need much. Saquon don't need much. And they got two good tackles, so I'll give them their props for their tackles. But their interior O-line is not very good. I have their O-line room ranked number 29. But there are two tackles. They got two guys there that could be there for a long time, and if they can fix the interior part of their O-line, they can move up quick, quick. And with the guys they got there, you know, they may can do it. They got Tyree Phillips and Tyree. <clears throat> for the Ravens, Tyree plays some interior O-line, so he may slide in and play some for them. They got two former Ravens on the, the, the line right now. They got Ben Bredesen. They got Tyree Phillips. So both of them guys may end up playing guard for them. That may be they starting left and, and right guard, but – who knows? We'll see. But right now, as far as right now, I got them ranked 29th. I flip on over to the other side of the ball, their defensive side. There are three, four teams, so we're going to talk about their front five. Again, remember, three, four teams, we talk about the front five. Four, three teams, we talk about the front four. Uh, their front five, I have them ranked sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's talk about some names in that front five. A'shaun Robinson, love him. War Daddy. Dexter Lawrence, War Daddy. Leonard Williams, War Daddy. Kayvon Thibodeau, War Daddy. <laughs> Wink got some tools to play with over there, man. Wink got some guys that can go get after it and go get it on that front that front front line. He got some guys that can go get it. And um, you know, they rank six. I got them ranked six. They get after it over there. They do. They really do. Uh as far as linebackers, that's kind of they got one linebacker that I really like, and then just some guys. They got uh, Bobby, and I thought his name was Okarike. I think I heard somebody on TV, TV call it Okarike. Whichever one of these, he had a great season with the Colts last year. Now he's a giant. 
he's going to be like the, the the guy in the middle. So he can be set up with as good as their front is. He can be set up to have anywhere from 100, 150 tackles because their front is going to eat up blockers and he can just run. He can run and do a bunch of other things. But as far as the rest of the linebackers, yeah, they eh, they meh, they meh. But they front, going to make them better. But without that in action, I got their linebacker room ranked 22nd because it's Okereke and the band, or Okereke and the band. Even though I like Ojolari, he's still young, though. But it's Okereke and the band. <laughs> he's the leader with the mic, and they back there. They the Temptations. Then he had in the back. All right. They the Pips, I mean. Not the Temptations. They the Pips. He glad it's night. All right. Let's move on to um, cornerback. Cornerback room, I have him ranked 29th. I got a Dory Jackson, Darnay Holmes, Nick McLeod, uh, Deontay Banks, the other rookie from Maryland, uh, Cordell Flott, and Trey Hawkins. Um, they just cornerback by committee. Go win the job. The only one that I, I'm for sure is going to start is probably Dory Jackson, but the rest of them, go fight for it. Go fight for this number two spot. Go fight for this number three spot. And the thing about this is, no matter what they do, no matter what they're good at, it don't matter because we ain't going to blitz and y'all better play man. We ain't going to change it. <laughs> We've seen it firsthand. We ain't going to change it. You better play man and you better do a good job of it because we ain't blitzing. Uh, that safety room I have ranked 28th, which I have that safety room ranked one position lower than the cornerback room. I got Jason Pinnock, Xavier McKinney, uh, Bobby McClain, uh, Dane Benton. I don't really, I'm not a fan of any of those guys. Xavier McKinney came out of Alabama. Uh, I had high hopes for him. Nah, I ain't really seen much out of him. Let me let me look at something real quick. Look up for somebody. Look up for something. Let me see. Two. Two. So they had looking at it last year. They had six interceptions. Two from Julian Love, who is not on the roster anymore that I see. They had two from Dane Belton who is still on the roster as a backup to McKinney. One from Rodarius Williams, who I don't see, and one from Landon Collins. Again, that's why the secondary is ranked 28-29. So that's where they at. The Giants' defense on their back end, it's not very good. Their front end, darn good. Back end, not so hot. Front end, fire. Back end, cold. But again, so New York Giants, they came out to be 20.1111. And I, I told you a couple of days ago that this group, these last four teams were all in the 20s. And the Giants came out to be 20.111, which puts them number 24 on the more sifted Tyler Power rankings. So um, let me know, Giants fans, are am I spot on? Am I too high? Did I forget somebody? Um, should I should I have mentioned somebody like a backup or something like that? Um, let me know what I, what you think about the analysis of the New York Giants and put it in the comment section. And if Giants fans, you happen to come across this, share it in your groups, whether it be on Reddit, Facebook, or just in your group chats. And, um, you know, just get some new guys over here. And if you have not done so, please like the video. If you like what you saw so far, consider subscribing and hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of the countdown drops. And that's all I got for you today, so I'll see you soon. Peace out. Oh, I forgot your recap. Not peace out yet. <laughs> recap so you can kind of put it in the comments and let and, let, and see where, where we at. Quarterback room, 21st. Running back room, 8th. Wide receiver room, 25th. Tight end room, 13th. O-line, 29th. Then I flip on over to the defensive side. D-line edge, 6. Linebackers, 22nd. Cornerback, 29th. Safeties, 28th. For a total of 24th on the countdown. Now we out of here.